Ryan Harwood, welcome to BOSS. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. For those of you who have not seen BOSS yet, BOSS is my exciting new LinkedIn weekly video content series where I get to interview my badass executive network to help others learn, network, and pay it forward in this crazy new normal that is 2020. My name is Ryan Harwood. I'm the CEO of Gallery Media Group, which is the media and publishing arm of VaynerX. I founded PureWow, a women's lifestyle media company 10 years ago, which was uh, acquired in 2017 by Gary Vaynerchuk. I live in New York City. I'm a husband and father to two amazing children, you know, avid basketball and tennis fan, and I'm thrilled to be here today. I love it. Before we jump in, how, how do we know each other? We went to college together at the University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia. We did. And we, um, we grew up near each other, too. Different high schools, but like same general area. And I've just, you know, watched uh, as a fan of your career from, from Goldman Sachs to, to founding and just kind of, you know, taking over the world, so to speak. Oh, thank you so much. Let's take it back a little bit. Um, so for, for those who don't know, you know, how did you, how did you get to where you are now? I gave a little bit of a, a glimpse into that, but like, where did your brain trust come from? Where did your network come from? Like, what got you here for those who are trying to explore similar or different paths? When I left college, I wasn't ready to give up sports. So after a four-year stint playing D1 college tennis, I played a little bit of pro for a year. Uh, it was never my dream, but I just wasn't ready to give it up. Um, and then I went straight into the finance world. Uh, you mentioned I spent five years plus at Goldman Sachs, at, you know, at which point I realized corporate America really wasn't necessarily for me. Mm -hmm. um, I desperately wanted to be in charge of my own destiny and die on my own sword, so to say. Uh, I was fortunate enough to have the opportunity to pivot careers into the media space. And you know, I received some funding uh, from Bob Pittman to start Pure Wow. Um, and, you know, I've been building that business for 10 years, but three years ago started an umbrella company called Gallery Media Group that now has other assets such as 137 PM and a podcast arm amongst other media properties under that umbrella. And, you know, I think my, what you're calling boss network um, comes from a lot of different walks of life. I think that, you know, being someone that has diverse interests allow you to collect relationships, genuine relationships in different areas of your life. You know, college was definitely a place that I met a lot of really great people um, that have remained good friends and that have helped in my career. Um, you know, tennis is a place that I grew up playing my entire life competitively and have some lifelong relationships there. Uh, so, you know, for me, it's, it's finding people that you, that you trust, you get along with, that you have chemistry with. I love that. And I, I imagine like when I asked you to do this and be on my, my, my new series, saying yes was easier because we went to school together. That's yeah. Fun. You know, someone, you know, they have their intent is in the right place. And, and yeah, of course it's easier to say yes. What are the most important leadership qualities for executives today? Self-awareness is number one, having a really high EQ you know, kindness and empathy is something I'm a huge fan of, you know, be your authentic, true self. When I started, when I was a first time entrepreneur, first time CEO of a business 10 years ago, you know, I definitely tried to emulate other bosses, other people that were successful. And that was, when I look back, it was kind of a mistake. Like you, you don't try to be someone you're not. Um, people can sniff that on you and they're not going to want to follow you. So be true to who you are. And, you know, in my opinion, doing the right thing is always the right thing. It's a very simple mantra. And um, you earn a lot of credibility in the long run. Karma points are really a thing. Yeah, I, I love that. We know that City just, you know, announced that the new CEO uh, is going to be a woman. Uh, we unfortunately had the passing of um, RBG uh, the other week, who was uh, the second woman, as well as the, the first Jew on the court. And the data, look at the Fortune 500, Global 500 list that came out, um, only 13 out of 500 of them are women, and there are no women of color on that list. Um, we know that these are stats that we should all be concerned about. You know, speak to me about this, especially, you know, so much of your work has been focused on just women in general from the content perspective too. Like, how do we push the world to do better? Yeah, I think you, we got to continue to raise awareness to the issue, but more importantly, create more opportunities for women and women of color to get the proper at-bats for those roles. 
right? It should be required. It should be mandated to have a diverse range of candidates. So women and women of color aren't left out of those potential leadership opportunities. And, and in order to do that, we need to increase the pool of candidates so everyone gets a, a fair shot. Because, I mean, think of it. If you interview 25 men and two women, the odds are not in their favor that one of the two women are going to be the candidates. But if you, if you interview 10 men and 10 women, now all of a sudden there's, there's a fair at bat there. So I think, I think that needs to be something that is really top of mind. I, I mean, well, I couldn't agree more. Uh, so, <laughs> so separately, well, actually similar in terms of um, positions and hiring, job loss is happening. We're in the middle of a global pandemic, right? The world is upside down as, as a dad, I imagine also juggling like back to school and kids and all this stuff, like things are nutty. Uh, what are some of your tips for people who are one looking to find new opportunities because they lost a job whether due to covid for other reasons and or just trying to like literally stay sane through the rest of 2020 <laughs> trying to figure out where they are what they are doing and who they are at any point in time <laughs> totally I, I mean i think it, it, going back to the job question um you know talk to everyone and anyone that will talk to you and spend time with you, learn about different industries. You know, when I was looking to make the pivot from finance to another industry, um, I asked everyone, like, what do you actually do for a living? Like, what do you do day to day? Because I, yeah, sure. I knew what real estate was, but what do you do in your job? You know, be, you also have to be willing maybe to take a step back for the sake of two steps forward. A lot of people have, ego about that. You know, they were a vice president in their other industry or their other job, and they don't want to be a director or whatever it may be. Like, you, it's okay to take a step back, get, get a shot. Because once you get that foot in the door, if, you, if you're good at what you do and you can prove yourself, then you're going to escalate quickly, more quickly than probably in the other job you had. So have no ego, learn, absorb, ask a million questions. Everyone feels embarrassed to ask questions. Uh, I think that was one of my greatest strengths was I had no shame about asking 55 questions until someone literally was like, I don't want to talk to you anymore. Um, and, but that's important because that's allows you to, that's how I learn. And, you know, also the other thing is apply like crazy because people are like, yeah, I'm trying, but like, they tell me I have no work experience here. I'm like, well, what did you do? And they're like, I applied to three places. I'm like, <laughs> That's not trying, like apply to 75 places, not five places. So it's a numbers game. It's process of elimination and, and don't, don't look for a shortcut. And the parent game, how are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, fortunately I have a, a wonderful wife who is a full-time job, full-time mom. So that is, a, I'm very fortunate and lucky, um, but I'm doing well. I mean, I think that this, I've, this has given me the opportunity to spend more time with my kids than I ever have in my entire life and that I ever probably would have been able to if this didn't happen. So trying to look at glass half full. Lightning round. If you are ready, what, what is the most important skill that leaders need for the future of work in one word? Self-awareness. Who's your favorite tennis player? Ooh, Roger Federer. Book that everyone needs to read. I don't read books. <gasps> I know. I know. That's yeah, well, CMO podcast. It's one of ours that I listen to quite a bit. It's called the CMO podcast. So I'll go with that one. But yeah, I know the books thing really throws people off. <laughs> uh, favorite TV show or movie? Sons of Anarchy and Game of Thrones are probably my two top. Those are good. Have you seen Cobra Kai? Love it, of course. Yes, Love I have. Uh, the creator is going to be on Boss soon. So everyone should pay Big attention. fan of this series. Big fan. He's a pen guy too. So we'll keep that posted. One thing you'll commit to do in 2020 to help pay it forward. I'm trying to be way more conscious about how to help the environment. You know, watching the fires out West is just scared the hell out of me, to be honest. I agree. Uh, what do you want to be known for over the next six to 12 months? Being the fairest, kindest boss that has, that always has the right intent. Um, finally, anything else that you want to say or share on this amazing LinkedIn boss interview? Thank you for, for having me. This is a lot of fun to be able to talk to you and see you. And I hope people gain uh, value out of this. Amazing. Well, thank you everyone. Watch every week. Uh, thanks again, Ryan. Appreciate it.